Welcome to this Imaginate Technologies tech tip on using a point cloud as a factory asset. My name is Rusty Belcher and I'll be working through this tech tip with you today. In this demonstration, I'm going to show you the process for utilizing a point cloud as a factory asset. One of the houses up the street is having their windows replaced and they're using a JLG lift to lift the people and the windows up into position and I thought this would be a great opportunity to go up and actually take pictures of the JLG lift use AutoCAD's 123D Catch tool to create a point cloud and use the point cloud as the factory asset. Uh, it's what I did. Here are the pictures that I took. I actually took about 50 pictures of the lift from different points of view and different angles. Uh, I took these pictures with my iPhone so I think anybody can do or repeat this process on your own. Once that was done, I used the AutoCAD 123D Catch tool. I uploaded all the pictures, had it stitched them together, and it actually came out with a very good scan of the lift. Now I did have to do some manual point stitching for this particular scan, but it worked fairly well. Now if you want more information about the Autodesk 123D Catch tool, I'd encourage you to go to the website that supports that tool and there's some videos there to talk about how to take pictures and make good scans. But one of the nice things about this particular tool is its ability to export the scene as an LAS file. Now these LAS files are typically laser scans and we can import these into the Inventor application. So let me show you the process for bringing that LAS file into Inventor. I've got my Inventor application open and I'm going to create a new component. So I'm going to start a part file. Now in the application I'm going to go to the Manage tab. This is where the new point cloud interface is located and I'm going to use the index command. Then I'll go out and find that LAS file that we created from 123D Catch. I'm going to select the index button and you'll see Inventor index or process the LAS file so that it's ready to insert into the Inventor drawing. Once it's processed you can click the attach tool and the part comes in on your cursor very much like a block inside of AutoCAD. Now I'm just going to drop it off and let's take a look at the attach point cloud options. I want to center my part at zero. It's something I typically do. You don't have to do that but I'm going to center it at zero zero. And then I want to change the rotation angle. Uh, right now my view cube is saying front so I'm going to modify the x-axis negative 90 degrees so that the point cloud is oriented the same way as the view cube. You can also adjust the density of the point cloud and it's almost at 100% so I'm just going to type in 100%. Now we still have to scale the point cloud. We'll have to figure out what that scale factor is and I'll show you how to do that next. I'm going to click OK and the point cloud has been brought into the Inventor environment. Now I want to show you how to scale the point cloud. It is important that you understand that the point cloud is not to scale by default when it comes out of the 123D Catch tool. We need to define a scalable object, measure it, come up with the scale factor, and then scale the point cloud accordingly. Now the scalable object I'm going to use is one of the wheels on the lift. I know that the diameter of the wheel is about 32 inches. So let me show you how we're going to uh, scale this up. I need to measure a couple of points here. Now in order to make that a little easier, uh, instead of measuring all the points, I'm going to use a box crop. Uh, this is another one of the new features inside of Inventor that uh, helps support point clouds. So I'm going to use the box crop and I'm going to isolate a portion of one of these wheels. Let me zoom in here so you can see that. I want to bring up the box so that it cuts the wheel right in half. And I'll select OK. Now don't worry, we haven't erased anything. Uh, the data is still there and we'll unhide it in a minute. I am going to use the point tool, uh, the cloud point tool on the point cloud panel and I'm going to select two points that are roughly across the diameter of the tire. Then we can use our inspection tools and measure the distance. Now it is important uh, to note you can measure from any of the points in a point cloud but I actually want to measure from my two points here 
So I have a distance of 1.62. So 1.621. Now let's go ahead and do the math for this. I'll bring up my calculator. So I know the desired distance is 32 inches. I want to divide that by 1.621. That equals about 19.74. So I'm going to copy that scale factor and let's jump back inside of Inventor. Underneath the point cloud folder you can right click on the point cloud and you can uncrop it so you can get back everything we saw earlier. So there we go. And now I want to modify the scale factor. Well, I'm going to right click on the point cloud and I'm going to choose the edit attached data option. This puts me back in the dialog box we were using earlier. And I'm going to paste my scale factor right there. We'll click OK. And now we know that our point cloud is full scale. The two points that we applied earlier are still attached to the wheel so we can actually use our distance command, come back in and measure it and see that they are just about exactly 32 inches apart. As far as our process goes, I do want to take the opportunity to delete these points. We don't need these points. Uh, they've served their purpose. Now the next thing I want to do is remove any unnecessary points. As you can see, the road and the uh, curbs are actually shown in the point cloud. And I want to remove that data before I publish this as a factory asset. Now I've already shown you the tool that we're going to use to do that. We're going to go back to the Manage tab and use that Box Crop tool. We can't erase points. It's kind of important that you understand that, but we can hide them. So I'm using the Box Crop tool. There is a nice option here. It's very neat. I can keep the outside and keep instead of keeping the inside. So I can drag the box around and make sure that it is wide enough to take out the desired points. I click the check mark and I've removed the points as you can see there. Now I'm going to pause the video at this point and clean up the rest of this and then I'll uh, turn the recording back on when we're ready to go. So I just turned the recording back on. I've saved a file. I've got the unwanted points removed or hidden from the file. Now I want to begin the process of publishing this as an asset. Now we still have to do a few things before we publish the point cloud as an asset. One of the first things I need to do is establish a landing surface. We need to remember this is a point cloud. There are no faces or surfaces in the model. So we're going to have to build our own. So I added this uh, work plane. Let me turn the visibility of that on. I simply offset one of the default work planes until it was approximately in the right position. Something else I did uh, was to create a manual sketch. Let's go ahead and turn the visibility of this on. I created a manual sketch of what I want the top-down view to look like when this asset is used inside of AutoCAD. Let me go up and turn off the visibility of the point cloud. and You can take a look at my sketch, but this is an approximate top-down view of what the JLG lift would look like. Let's go ahead and turn the visibility of the point cloud back on. A couple of other things I did here, I don't know if you can see it, I have some insertion points I put onto the sketch and I added a couple of work points here so that I can select these work points as insertion points during the asset publishing process. Now my intention is to publish this to the factory asset warehouse so that anyone who's using the factory design suite can download this asset and use it in their assemblies. I want to make sure I test the asset and publish it locally before I take the opportunity to publish it to the cloud. So let's begin the publishing process. I'm going to start my asset builder. The first thing I'm going to do is define my landing surface. This is where we're going to utilize that work plane. In this particular case, I do need to flip the work plane upside down, change the orientation of it. I'm going to choose my insertion points. I'll pick the two work points that we generated earlier, and I'll click OK. And you'll see the asset orient correctly. Now at this point, I want to make sure to turn off the visibility of my work features. It's one of the things that I find a little bit annoying is if someone's left the work features visible on a published asset. So I'm just going to take the chance to go back over here, take the visibility off of these work features so that you don't see them in the published asset. I'm going to hop back into the Asset Builder. 
Um, by the way, I also want to go over and take the visibility off of that sketch. Let's make sure we do that as well. Now we're going to hop back into the Asset Builder. I do want to check my asset properties. I have these things filled out already with the correct title, company, categories, the author, and any keywords that I'd like to perform a search on. Now it is time for me to save it. You do have to save it before you publish it. And then we can begin the publishing process. So here you can see the new Publish Asset dialog for the 2013 release of Factory Design Suite. I am going to publish this locally. I want to make sure that I put it in the right folder. I actually have a folder that I'm using for some of my point cloud scans. I want to make sure to place that there. Now in this particular asset, again, remembering that point clouds have no edges or surfaces, it's important that we go to the 2D options and turn on the option to use that published sketch. That sketch number one is what I want to use when we use this asset inside of AutoCAD. Very important that we remember that step. We'll go back over to the General tab and select the OK button to publish it. Now I already have a copy of this so I'm just going to go ahead and cancel at this particular point. Now you want to make sure and test your assets before you publish them to the cloud. So to test our asset I'm actually going to start a new factory layout and I'm going to drop a couple of copies of our asset in place. So we can drag it right off of the asset browser. Uh, you can uh, use the tab button to uh, alter between your insertion points. Let me show you that here on this next one. You can use the tab button to jump back and forth between your insertion points and you can drop it in place and just make sure it works as expected. We also want to make sure to test our assets inside of AutoCAD. So I've opened up my AutoCAD application and I'm going to drag the asset from the asset browser and place it into AutoCAD. Notice that in this case the sketch is the only thing that shows up. It comes in basically as a block you can use your copy commands to copy this object. You want to make multiple copies of that just to test it out. I've got another point cloud asset. This is actually the generator that's downstairs in my garage. We'll place that right there. And I wanted to add a lighting tower and a forklift. So let's bring in the lighting tower. We'll put that over here. And a forklift. These are things you would typically see, I guess, at a construction site. And I want to test the new Inventor Sync option. So I want to actually sync this to Inventor. I'm going to select that tool. We're going to have to save our file. And then Inventor will open up and automatically place the corresponding 3D assets on top of the 2D counterpart. So I can see the parts coming in place. I see the JLG lifts. I see the point cloud for the generator. I also see our lighting tower and our forklift coming in. So, you know, that quickly we've tested the process of using our asset inside of AutoCAD 2D and having it update the 3D model as well. So everything looks good. Let's go ahead and take a look at the process for publishing it to the cloud. Uh, now that I've got it ready to go, I can hop back over here to this file. I'm already in the asset builder. We'll just go ahead and start the publish command. And in this or in this case, we're going to take the opportunity to choose the cloud option. Now, one of the first things you want to remember is to go back up to the 2D options and make sure you're publishing that sketch one option. Once you choose your cloud-based uh, option, you can go in and choose your categories. I have a category here for my point cloud asset. And I want to make sure to share this with the factory design community. Now again, I already have this asset published and if you'd like to take a look at it, if you have Factory Design Suite, all you have to do is open up your asset browser and do a search on JLG or Cherry Picker. Either way, you'll find the asset and you can download it and use it in your uh, Factory Design Suite. So this is going to conclude our tech tip on utilizing point clouds as factory assets. If you have any questions about the contents of this demonstration, please feel free to contact your Imaginate Technologies account representative.